the musicians. This is Brie Noble. And today we're going to be talking about how to make sure that your fans stick around. And I'm using a little play on words here because I love to talk about what I call fan stickiness, which means that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that come into contact with your music and how can you make sure that you can continue to connect with those people? That is where the stickiness comes in. And we're going to talk about that here today. And we're going to talk about it because I think many of you know that the way to really create income in your music career is to build your fan base. I think this is not something that anyone would debate. <laughs> I think we all know that building your fan base and nurturing them and getting them to become supporters of you is going to be the way to get you the income that you need, either if you're wanting to do this as a career, a full-time effort, quit your job, um, do it to support yourself, or if you just wanna be able to keep making more music, we need to get money coming in, right? Because this this is not a cheap endeavor. We're recording, we're buying gear, we're buying new instruments, we're you know investing in programs to learn, especially as indie artists, how to do things in our own career because we are the master of our own career. So we need to get that money coming in and the way to do that is to build your fan base. So I'm pretty sure you're all on board with that, but I think where the, the problem comes in is that artists don't really know how to build their fan base. They just keep hearing, build your fan base, build your fan base. And they know some tactics, but they don't have a good big picture of how they're supposed to do it. And so in trying to emulate what they think is going to build their fan base, because they hear a lot of things around about how to do it, they make several mistakes. And I want to go over those because maybe you've made them. I know I certainly made them in the beginning. And we want to clear these up so you can have a clear path forward on how to build your fan base so you can get that income, right? So number one, as far as the mistakes that artists are making and maybe you're making this one. And I, I did this, I did this in the beginning, throwing money at the problem. So we see these other artists and we look up to them because they look as if their career is having a lot of traction or they're, you know, appearing in places that seem really impressive. They've got this great PR, they've got radio play, all of that and they've spent a good deal of money on that, right? And so we think, okay, if we just do that, that is gonna solve our problem. That's gonna allow us to jump ahead just like these other artists that we see. And so we spend a good deal of money on this. I see artists spending three, $5,000 on PR campaigns, radio campaigns, things like that in the beginning because they think that that is what's going to move them forward. I, I even see people like signing with like indie labels, thinking that that's going to be their ticket. And truthfully, it might get you a little bit of exposure, but because you don't have all of the foundations in place to create that fan stickiness that you need, to turn someone from a listener or a new consumer of your music into an actual fan who wants to keep up with what you're doing, you don't have any sticky points in place, then you cannot capitalize on any of this exposure that you're paying big bucks for. So what are sticky points? Well, things like having a website, having an incentive for people to join your email list, even actually having an email list. So many artists don't even put these things into place and they think it's just easier to throw money at the problem because they think they don't have time or, you know, to build these foundational elements or that it just kind of freaks them out. They don't, they don't know how to do it right. So they just don't do it. And they think, well, if I just 
throw a bunch of money at the problem, then I'll just build a fan base that way. But think about it. Even if you got a ton of people listening to you on Spotify, you might make some money from streams, but you can't communicate with those people. You have no way for them to really get to know you. You have no way other than the Spotify algorithm to serve up future releases. There's no way for them to really develop a strong bond with you and care about whether you're going to continue to make more music enough to support you monetarily. Yeah, they can support you with streams and they might do that naturally if they like your music, but that's not going to be enough to sustain you. So putting all these foundational elements into place is what you need to do before you throw money at the problem. And you think that hiring out these things is going to help you jump ahead because you see that's what other artists are doing. But most of the time when these things are giving traction to those artists, it's because they've put these foundational elements into place. They have a a, a really good looking website. They've really thought through their branding. So people really recognize them wherever they are around their branding. They have thought through, you know, how am I showing up on social media? What do I, what are kind of my talking points around my music? They have created an email list and they're communicating with them. And they've figured out ways to, to keep communicating with people after performances. This is what they've put into place so that spending three or $5,000 on radio campaigns or PR campaigns will actually yield results for them because they're using these sticking points to take all of this attention that they're getting and pull it into them and keep control of that. So that's number one, thinking that you can just throw money at the problem and it will fix everything. Mistake number two is thinking that acquisition of new listeners and turning them into fans will just happen naturally. And I see people, especially in the digital realm, doing this because they think, well, all I have to do is put my music up on all these platforms and people will just find me. And guess what? There is such a glut of music out there. There is, and I'm not telling you this to discourage you. I really do believe that every artist has a place in the indie music community and can find their niche of people that will love their music. They can find their corner, corner of the internet market. So don't think that just because it's a lot of music out there, that means that there's really no hope for you, not at all. But I am saying that you can't just leave this up to chance. You have to have in mind kind of the big picture of how do people find you and then how do they connect with you to stay connected? And here comes the sticky points again, right? What happens is you have no capture system. If you don't have an email list and you know you don't even have a website, <laughs> then no one's going to be able to look for more information on you. I know if I find a cool new artist on Spotify, I go and I look them up and I have actually gone to their website and been like, Hey, I'd love to know if this artist is coming to my area so I can go to a concert and I've signed up for their email list. And if you don't have those ways that people can seek you out to get more information when they first hear your music, then you've lost that person. They're going to go on to someone else. They might remember your name. They might save your song on their Spotify playlist, but they might just forget and go on to someone else. I know with me, like if I don't do something about it right away, I'm going to forget because my memory's not as good as it used to be. So you have to present these opportunities. Also, what happens is presenting people with a way to like connect with you further and that sticky point I'm talking about to some artists that feels like you're trying to sell yourself and it feels super uncomfortable. And so I want to reframe this for you. It's not like you're trying to ensnare them in a web. <laughs> 
you're offering them an opportunity and they can say yes or no. That's all it is. That's all it is. You're not trying to like, oh, please, oh, please, like beg them to come. And you're not trying to just, if I could just, you know, convince them or if I could just somehow trick them <laughs> into signing up for my email list, then I know that I can, you know, I can get them more excited about my music later. That's not the point. Not the point at all. You are presenting them at an opportunity at the point where they are excited about what you have to offer. That's all it is. It's like if you, you know, go to a restaurant and you're looking at the menu and you're trying to decide what to order and then you you smell this amazing smell and you're like, what is that? Oh my gosh, I need that. But you don't know what it is. And then someone says to you, oh, that's our, you know, whatever, this thing, like say, you know, our amazing chocolate chip scone or something. And they walk up to you and they're like, would you like to try one of our chocolate chip scones? And you're like, yeah, <laughs> like I'm so ready for that right now. And so it, you're, you're getting that, that taster, right? And they want to have that taster. And that might make them then later be like, oh gosh, now that I've tasted that, I can never forget about that scone anymore. I'm going to come buy it every single day, <laughs> you know, or maybe they taste it, they loved it, but they kind of forget about it. But then if they were to have that offered in front of them again, in the form of you sending out emails after they join your email list or putting out content on social media, they'd be like, oh yeah, I remembered how much I love that. I want to be, sh be sure and pay more attention when they're putting this out here again. So that's all it is. And if you feel weird about it, if you feel uncomfortable about offering this opportunity to stay connected with you, you might want to examine whether you believe that what you're offering is valuable. If you really believe that, then you need to know it's just an exchange of value. Just like buying something is an exchange of value. Money is just an exchange of value. And in this case, the currency is their attention and time. And if you feel that what you have to offer your music is of value, then know that they're giving you something in their email address and you're giving them something back. So it shouldn't feel uncomfortable at all. I realize this is a mind shift that takes a while, but I want to encourage you to lean into that. And then thirdly, I want you to put yourself in your fan's shoes. When you are a fan of something, like I just talked about discovering a new artist on Spotify and going out and actually seeking them out, finding their website and being thankful that they had an email list so I could stay in touch and find out when they had new music, when they might be coming to my area. I know you've all done that. So put yourself in the shoes of your fan and that will help you see this in the correct light of it's not supposed to be weird. It's not supposed to be uncomfortable. It's not supposed to feel like selling. It's offering them something that they want. Okay. So third mistake that I see people make is this is about engagement. So the previous one was about fan acquisition. acquisition. This one is about engagement. So many artists see this as a chore and it's super sad. Like I don't love that. And I get why, because it does feel overwhelming when you hit that tipping point And when you have a lot of people connecting with you, people emailing you back when you send out an email and you feel like you want to respond to all of them, people on social responding to you, it does eventually feel like, oh, it's so overwhelming. And I need to, you know, make sure I have enough time to write more music and perform and record and all the things that I love to do. But I'm feeling like there's this this burden on me. And there are ways to mitigate this, first of all. But, and, I, and I'll tell you what those are, but first of all, I see people just running away. <laughs> like, they're just like, I can't handle this. I'm just, I'm just going to put content out there and I'm not going to commit to engaging because I just can't do it. And truthfully, why are you spending the time putting the content out there if you're not willing to engage? That's the only point. If you like if you are like throwing your 
your um, fishing line out there, putting the bait on and everything and taking the time and tying it correctly and all that and throw it out there, but you actually didn't care if you ever caught a fish. Like, what's the point of that? There is no point. You may as well not go fishing at all. So just think about that as you're considering how you're going to engage with your fans. But um, here's another thing that artists do, and this is why it feels so overwhelming. Whenever they engage or you know, they do a certain task around engagement, they're constantly reinventing the wheel. They don't have any systems around it. If you create a system for yourself, it's not going to feel like a chore. If you're like, hey, every day, you know, while I'm eating my lunch, I'm going to go through my Instagram and respond to people and comment and all of that stuff, then it will just feel like a regular part of your day. It won't feel like, oh, another task that I have to do. Or if you bring someone on to help you, maybe even a fan is willing to volunteer to engage for you in some cases, set a system around that. Ask them, hey, can you do this for like 30 minutes a day? And here's the kind of things that I like to respond to fans. And, you know, if they're a fan, they probably already know. And if you need to hire someone else, like a high school student or a college student, somebody local, some relative, you know, they can they can engage for you as well and they can also flag things that they think yeah you really need to respond to this because this is this is really interesting or i think this could really do well with you having a personalized response to this and so that's a system that you've created around it so it doesn't feel so overwhelming and then finally as i said hire it out as long as you're in charge of this, like you are still connected. What I see artists do is that they fully hire it out. Like they just go like, here, you deal with my social media. And then it's totally inauthentic. Like it's not them. It's not, it, it doesn't sound like them when they're posting. It's not really relevant to anything that they're doing currently. It's just kind of stock content and you're not going to get much engagement out of that anyway. So why would you do it? It's kind of a waste of time. What's better is to create a system around it. And I've talked a bit about how I've created a system around my content on Instagram where I have really, you know, created what I wanted to do for my posts, my IGTVs, my, um, my reels and around certain themes and pre-recorded them. So I have pre-recorded content and it doesn't feel overwhelming because I already got it created. I just set a certain amount of time ahead to do that. And then I can still feel free to engage as I want and do things that are more in the spur of the moment, things like stories, um, things like this particular recording that I'm doing right now, right? I just wanted to talk about this. I didn't pre-record this, but I have the time because I'm not stressed about what I'm going to post every day because I have a lot of things done in advance. And that is where creating systems is super important. So those are the three mistakes that I see artists making around trying to really turn listeners into fans and getting them to stay with you. We all want super fans, right? But that's only going to happen if we're nurturing them over time. And we're doing this in a connected way. And you cannot do that if you don't have any way for those people to stay connected with you such that you can communicate with them on a more personal level. So yes, that does mean your website, your email list, having ways to get people onto that list through social media, through your performances, all those things, and then having ways that those people then can support you monetarily through whatever your means you prefer. If you prefer crowdfunding, if you prefer Patreon, if you want to do some special concert experiences, you can do some really cool things as an artist. And I've seen people do so many different things to monetize their fan base, but it all starts with capturing them 
and making sure they stick with you. And understanding your complete fan discovery roadmap is what I like to call it, where we're thinking about, okay, they come into my world, then how do I pull them in, right? How do I pull them in so I can keep communicating with them? That's your sticky points. And then how am I going to move them through this journey with me to becoming more and more connected so eventually they're like super excited to support me because they want to make sure that I get enough money to create more music and keep going. So that is your fan stickiness roadmap. And I love just talking about the whole stickiness thing because I think that that's where things fall through the cracks a lot. A lot of artists that I work with, they've got a lot of sticky point gaps. And that's why I am actually going to be starting a new program to help artists fill those sticky point gaps. And I'm calling it the Musician's Profit Path Accelerator Program because we are gonna make sure that we fill all of those gaps and we're going to be using my Musician's Profit Path framework so you can see where your gaps are, fill them, make them even better if you've already gotten some of these assets created and, and really create a machine that turns a listener to a fan, to a supporter. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'm gonna be opening this program very soon and I would love for you to sign up for the wait list. You can do that at profitablemusician.com slash accelerator. That's profitablemusician.com slash accelerator, A-C-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-O-R. And once you've signed up, stay tuned. I'm gonna be releasing information on that next week. So be sure and sign up there and we will be in touch. I cannot wait to help you create those stickiness points in your own musician business.